Hey YouTube, Mopar Madman coming at you with another video. Um, I really didn't see a whole lot about this when I was uh, buying my 300 Black Eyed Upper, so I thought that I would make a quick video, um, help you guys learn from my mistakes or my uh, lack of knowing what I really was looking for. Um, just going to cover a couple real basic things. Um, one of the things I struggled when I was looking for my upper, I was trying to pick what twist rate to get, and I saw a video on twist rate for the 223, but not really a 300 black. And I looked at the Sammy spec, and the Sammy spec says 1 and 8 twist minimum, and some other things. And so when the uh, upper I was looking at went on sale, and it had a 1 and 8 twist, I said, it's probably good enough. And so that's what this upper is. This upper is a um, from Palmetto State Armory. It's an 8.5 inch barrel. Um, it is a 1 and 8 twist stainless steel barrel and I'm not going to say that this is a bad upper what I will say is that upper is horrible at stabilizing heavy projectiles um, I've had some factory ammo through it I've put every single one of these projectiles through it with extremely poor results um, I'm going to clip in a video um, and show you guys a little bit of range time and give you guys a shot of the actual target so you can understand exactly what I'm talking about. Too bad. Beautiful. So, guys, if you looked at the target at the end, which I'll probably put a shot up, it uh, you'll see that it basically looks like the bullets went through the paper sideways. I will say that that distance is a mere 35 feet. So, 35 feet at the indoor range, and these bullets are absolutely flying sideways. Now, those are real heavy 220 grain projectiles, but why I sell this? You guys need to know when you're buying these uppers, when you're buying the barrel for your 300 blackout, what you want to shoot in it. If you're going to shoot a 110 grain projectile, if you're going to shoot a 120 grain projectile, or if you're going to shoot a 150 grain projectile, you're probably going to be fine with a 1 and 8 twist. So when you go look at the comments for your favorite barrel and it says, or the barrel you're looking at, it says, oh, it shot great, shot great. Look to see what they're actually shooting through it. See if it's an actual heavy projectile. If you're trying to shoot subsonic, especially if you're going to shoot suppressed, but if you're trying to shoot subsonic suppressed, those bullets can't fly that way. And that's why I was so disappointed when I bought my upper. I was doing some work on it, doing my load work up, and I could not find a have your projectile that will go through that at subsonic velocities, cycle the action, and have the bullets fly straight. It just doesn't happen. Um, other than that, I will say you know it's a good upper for fast projectiles. If you know if you're shooting 150 grain through 110 grain, any one of those seems to go just fine with it. But heavy projectiles, that's to said I've got a 220 grain constant comp nozzle, 225 grain hollow point mat or uh, yeah hollow point bow tail match the 208 grain amax which they've discontinued and now they have uh, another version basically the same 208 grain um, and then 220 grain round nose even because I was trying to get a largest bearing surface I possibly could and a little bit shorter bullet because if you actually start looking at these rules which I'll probably put up on the screen so you can you can understand so if you guys want to do a little bit of research on this you can look up two things there's a Miller twist rule and then there's something fancy called the Greenhill equation. Both of these, and there's different calculators you're going to find out there, and they're going to, you're going to pull in the bullet tw twist and the velocity that you're shooting, and they're all going to tell you within some range of thing that probably a 1 and 8 twist is going to be a good enough for your 300 blackout barrel. What I'm telling you is I've got another buddy that has a KAK value line barrel with a 1 and 8 twist, and it does the same exact thing as mine. It shoots heavy grain projectiles sideways. There are some, I've seen uh, one of the guys, my reloading bench, he's got a 1 and 8 twist, but he's got an ultra match barrel 
and his gun seems to do okay as long as he's shooting jacketed, though I can see that the heavier grain straight lead projectiles that he is shooting um, have certainly had some sideways action uh, in his rifle. So what did I do about it? Well, if you can see, you probably can see this fancy little box right in front of me that says Noveski. Um, I was so tired of working everything up and having nothing work that I went and uh, honestly went to YouTube, found a video, and I said, what are these guys shooting? And so I found a Noveski barrel. I put this upper receiver together completely um, by myself. Um, it's an Aero Precision upper receiver and an Aero Precision handguard um, and a Noveski barrel. Um, I have shot everything from 110 grain projectiles all the way to the 220, both 220 grain, 225 grain projectiles. This thing stabilizes everything. This barrel also has a 1 in 7 twist rate which I would recommend if you guys are going to get a barrel and you want it to stabilize everything you could possibly shoot through it I would go with a 1 in 7 twist regardless of what the Miller rule or greenhouse formula or any of that tells you go for a 1 in 7 twist rate if it's an option for you I think it's a heavy consideration I'm sure there's going to be those guys that have 1 in 8 twist rates that can find some projectiles that work or you can get a barrel that you know is going to work. So a 1 in 7 twist I highly recommend. Um, I, it's a, I shot this out to it's 150 yards and been uh, very happy with what it can do. So um, anyway, that's my quick snippet. Uh, if you guys want more thing, but I wanted to put that video out there to show you guys uh, what this thing, uh, well basically what this guy can do. As I said, honestly, for the price, I mean, this was a, a deal on a PSA. You know, for what I paid for it, it's really a good barrel. And if you want to shoot low weight projectiles at high velocities, this barrel will do it. I've had really good luck with the, uh, the 144 grain uh, ADI ammunition, just stock ammunition through it. My 110 grain reloads, my 150 grain reloads, my 125 grain reloads, everything's shot really well through it. But uh, I said when I you bump it up to try and run a subsonic load, um, it just doesn't work. So anyway, that's my piece, um, and I include the video so you guys would understand exactly how bad that I think that thing stabilizes heavy bullet. In the video, those are the 220 grain. Um, oh, the only box I have up here, 220 grain Sierra Match Kings. So that's uh, just grab it. So I've shot 220 grain Sierra Match Kings, 220 grain Custom Competitions. 225 grain Horton AMAX, 208 grain AMAXs, 220 grain, and this barrel likes them all, all the way down to 150s, 110s. I've loaded a lot of 300 black guys, and this barrel likes them all. This is a very expensive barrel. Uh, you can see it if you want to. Um, you don't have to spend that kind of money probably if you don't want to. However, um, this really is a great barrel. Um, I would buy it again. It certainly alleviated all the frustrations I was having um, trying to get my uh, previous upper to uh, shoot heavier grain projectiles. So, and the same, that's my buddy has one of the Value Line KAK barrels and 1 and 8 twist, and his will fling factory ammunition sideways. So, well, YouTube, that's all I really had. Um, if you uh, liked the video, uh, go ahead and like it. Subscribe if you want. I'll come at you with uh, some more interesting stuff when I see it. Um, I hope I help somebody pick a, a successful barrel for their application. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and post the comment section below. I will try and get to those um, if I get a second. Um, thanks for watching.